Hi everyone, my name is Victoria. I'm an astronomer and I study distant planets. Today, we're going to be talking about discovering and exploring other worlds. To get us started, I'm going to give you a few seconds to think about a planet, any planet. Maybe you thought of one of these. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. These are the planets in our solar system, and they orbit around the sun. Or maybe you thought of a planet more like this, something from science fiction, like Tatooine from Star Wars or Krypton from Superman. I already mentioned that I study distant planets, and the planets that I study for my research are real, like solar system planets, but they're also kind of like science fiction planets because they revolve around stars other than the sun. We call these planets outside of our solar system exoplanets. And up until only about 25 years ago, exoplanets were a thing of fiction because no one had found one yet. And actually, science fiction was really helpful to astronomers back then because it helped them imagine something that they had never seen. And sometimes that's how things in science get discovered. It's not always that scientists find something by accident. Sometimes it's that scientists imagine something that might exist and then go out to look for it. Back before exoplanets were discovered, some astronomers thought that they might exist because they knew that the sun is a star and they knew that the sun has planets orbiting around it. Now these astronomers also knew that there are hundreds of billions of stars in our galaxy alone. And they thought that it was a pretty good bet that some of these stars might also have planets orbiting around them. Once these astronomers had the idea that exoplanets might exist, they had to ask themselves how they were going to find them. Now they thought, and you might think, that you could just take a telescope and look for them. If exoplanets are out there orbiting around their stars, maybe we'll just see them. But there's a problem. Exoplanets are really hard to see. And that's because they orbit very close to very bright stars. These stars are so bright that they almost entirely outshine the planets next to them. In fact, trying to see an exoplanet directly is like trying to see a firefly next to a car headlight. The car headlight is going to almost entirely wash out the firefly, and you're going to need some very special technology to try to see it. Now, back before exoplanets were discovered, astronomers did not have the technology necessary to image an exoplanet directly. Instead, they had to use what they knew about stars and about planets to think of another way to detect exoplanets. And they thought of one way, using gravity. Now we always say that the planets orbit around the sun. And that's true. But when you get down to the nitty gritty details, actually, the sun and the planets orbit around each other. Here you can see a small planet going in a wide circle around a star. And you can also see that star is also going around in a much smaller circle. Astronomers back then knew that this happens and they thought maybe if they could measure the movement of a star over time using telescopes, they would be able to detect the star's movement, sometimes called the star's wobble, caused by an exoplanet going around it. Let's take a minute to talk about how these measurements might look. We're going to look at a graph that has time on the x-axis and speed or velocity of the star on the y-axis. Now remember, we can't see the exoplanet. So these white dots are showing us the velocity of the star every time an astronomer looked at it with their telescope. The first section of the graph shows us that the star was moving away from us as the planet orbited halfway around its star. Then we can see the star turned around and moved back toward us as the planet finished its orbit. 
Astronomers thought that if they could see this pattern in the movement of a star, that they could tell that there was a planet orbiting around it. And this actually worked. This is how astronomers discovered the first exoplanet back in 1995. And since then, over 900 other exoplanets have been discovered this way. But this method isn't only good for discovering exoplanets, it's also good for learning about them. Now, if we go back to this graph, we know that the pattern of the star's movement tells us that there is an exoplanet there. But there are a few other things we can measure. We can measure how long it takes for the star to wobble, which is the same amount of time that it takes for the exoplanet to go around the star. We can also measure how big of a wobble the exoplanet is causing in its star. Now to figure out what these measurements tell us about the exoplanets, we can compare them to the planets in our own solar system. Let's start off by talking about Mercury. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun, which also means that it's one of the hottest because it's getting so much heat from the sun. It's sort of like if you were standing close to a hot radiator, you'd be a lot warmer than if you were standing far away from that radiator. Also because Mercury is the closest planet to the sun, we know that it takes the shortest amount of time to orbit around. Here on Earth, it takes us one year or 365 days to orbit around the sun, but it takes Mercury only 88 days, which is much shorter. If we were to look at a graph of the movement of the sun caused by Mercury, it would look something like this. The blue arrow is showing us how long it takes the sun to complete one wobble caused by Mercury. Now, if we look at Jupiter, Jupiter is a lot further from the sun, which means that it's a lot cooler because it's not getting as much heat from the sun. We also know that Jupiter takes a lot longer to orbit around the sun. It goes around once every 17 years. If we were to look at a graph of the movement of the sun caused by Jupiter, it would look something like this. Notice that the blue arrow on Jupiter's graph is a lot longer than the blue arrow on Mercury's graph. And remember, any time we take the measurements of the movement of a star over time, we can always measure how long it takes that star to wobble, which is the same amount of time that it takes a planet to go around that star. We can use that time to tell us if that exoplanet is close to its star and hot, like Mercury, or further from its star and cool, like Jupiter. I also said that we can measure how big of a wobble an exoplanet creates in its star. If we look at Mercury again, Mercury is the smallest or least massive planet in the solar system. So we know that it creates the smallest wobble in the sun. Look at how short that vertical arrow is. If we compare this to Jupiter, which is the largest or most massive planet in the solar system, we know that Jupiter creates a pretty large wobble in the sun. So if we measure the movement of a distant star and we see that it's wobbling a lot because of an exoplanet, we know that exoplanet is pretty big, like Jupiter. And if that star is only wobbling a little bit because of an exoplanet, we know that exoplanet is pretty small, more like Mercury. Not only are we learning about exoplanets by comparing them to planets in our solar system, we're actually applying some laws of physics that you might have learned about in class. The laws of gravity and Kepler's laws of planetary motion. Remember, we can't see most exoplanets directly. And they're really, really far away, so we can't go visit them. But using just these few things we've been able to learn about exoplanets, we can already start imagining what it might be like if we could go there. And NASA has been doing just this. They've been making these really cool exoplanet travel posters, where they imagine what it would be like if you were able to go visit these real exoplanets. Here's one example. 55 Cancri E. Now this planet orbits around its star really quickly. It goes all the way around its star in less than three days. That means that it's really close to its star, which means it's very hot. It is so hot 
that we can imagine this planet is entirely covered with lava. And here's another poster of HD 40307G. Super catchy name, I know. This planet creates a bigger wobble in its star than the Earth does in the Sun. So that means that this planet is bigger than Earth. It's actually seven times as massive. In this poster, NASA is imagining what it would be like if you could skydive on this planet. This would be a daredevil's dream. Because this planet is more massive than Earth, its gravity would be a lot stronger than gravity is here on Earth. So you would fall a lot faster. You would also have to be a lot stronger because anything on this planet would weigh a lot more than it does on Earth. Everything that we've talked about is just like what I do in my research. I take measurements of the movement of stars using telescopes, like this one. This is a telescope in Chile, and that's me. You can see that the mirror of the telescope behind me is really big. So I take these measurements of stars, and I try to find and measure that star's wobble in order to detect and learn about exoplanets. Now the tricky thing about my research is that sometimes there are things about the star itself that can make it look like it's wobbling when it really isn't. So what I need to do is make measurements of these wobbles and then really investigate them to make sure that they're being caused by exoplanets and not by the star itself. Astronomers have discovered almost 5,000 exoplanets since the first one was discovered 25 years ago and they've been able to learn a lot about them, much more than I was able to tell you about in this video. But there are still a lot of questions left to answer, like how exactly do exoplanets form? And are there any exoplanets out there that are like Earth? I think that's a really exciting thing about studying exoplanets. You never know what you're going to learn, or who's going to make the next big discovery about them. It could be me, or it could be you. Thank you so much for watching my video and I'm really looking forward to speaking with you soon.